Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning. Uh, today I will talk about how to develop and test your P4 features with a very high fidelity pro, uh, production environment. And, and I'm Hong Chang Hai Liu from Microsoft Research. Um, recently we can see that both from academia and the industry we have a lot of great ideas surrounding the emerging of P4 and uh, we see the uh, people proposing the new telemetry paradigm and uh, middle boxing and enhancing the existing protocols or even a uh, very cool in network distributed systems. Some of them are very imaginative. And uh, today I will not propose another features, but uh, I will just discuss a question that every developer and inventor of the features will care about and also the customer will care about is how do these people features work in the world. Okay, this is important for the network researcher, designer, because you, must, you have the motivation to you know, validate your ideas and designs, but you know, sometimes people from academia uh, don't have you know, realistic test environment. But things not get better in uh, industry, because uh, we, uh, in industry, engineers and operators also care about this problem because we want to guarantee the safety of the production when we move to the new feature. But we have the production system, but we don't have the freedom to try out any trials. And this is essentially you know, important to build our confidence on your uh, ideas and uh, development because finally there will be someone that you know, write a check or make decisions which challenge you with a tough but very reasonable question is that whether your features will create any incidents in our network and will you be responsible for that? And then to answer this question, to decide whether to make a bet or not, so you must uh, you know, have a very good confidence and not overconfidence. Otherwise, you know, bad thing will happen. Right? <laughs> okay, let's see in the existing approaches, how do you build up your confidence, right? So first of all, in the development, you use uh, some environment like Mininet and a small scale emulation to, uh, to do debugging. And uh, later, maybe you will use, you know, logically you will f use some uh, code verification, logical verification to cover all the, you know, uh, possible cases to see uh, logically your program is right. Right? That is very important, very uh, good step to build up your confidence. And then later you might want to wonder, okay, what it works in some uh, small test bed with the real software hardware together. And typically this is the three steps you use. But after that, will you, do you want to just bet yourself on this technology? Right, P typically, probably not, right? Because it, these three steps, Build a sufficient, uh, build a lot of confidence, but it's not sufficient enough for you to make the bet because we haven't answered the original question: how exactly it works in the wild, in the production. And uh, to to achieve that goal, you have there are three questions you have to answer. You have to ask by yourself, or somebody, your customer, or your paper reviewer will ask you: first, are you using a realistic control plane? Right. And second, are you using a realistic natural topology that in the uh, production? And the third, because we typically a customer has a big production network and there will be a lot of legacy devices like middle boxes, other vendors, you know, uh, routers that don't support P4 and uh, some policies. So will your technology just compatible with, with the legacy devices, right? And uh, Today, the, the takeoff of this talk, I hope, is that you know, later when people ask you this great question, your answer is only yes, right? Yeah. Okay, here's the outline of this talk. I will present uh, two kind of software systems we are using in Microsoft. And uh, the first is Sonic plus P4. It's, it's answering the first question, the control plane question, and the, the, the second, one is Crystal Knight, it's answered the, the second two question, and we will share some experience with these three pieces, Sonic plus P4 plus Crystal Knight together, and reach the conclusion. So, the, I would say the, a, a real 
a control plane stack is actually the base of the P4. So for example, this is a very simple program of P4. It defines the skeleton of the, of the table, right? So what's the logic to perform on the table? But where is the meat of the table? I mean, so the actual concrete entries in the table is actually from the control plane, right? And especially in the larger scale network, and the, when legacy devices talk about some legacy protocols, and when some dynamics like failures happen, so you rely on a very good control plane to uh, deal with the table and uh, feed it to the P4 program. So that means that you know, maybe you are focusing on the P4 program, but to feed the P4 program, you need a, a concrete P4 compatible tables. And to generate this, you need a whole control plane, which includes various of uh, uh, protocols. There are uh, layer three protocols, and there also depends on some layer two protocols, right? And finally, you also hope that, you know, after the traditional protocol computed the read, there will be some translation layer to translate this into the P4 compatible format. And uh, of course, you want to focus on the P4 program. And you don't want to just re-implement everything by yourself and test it until it's reached the production quality, right? And uh, is there anything that available for you to achieve that? So today I'm proud to introduce Sonic. Maybe Sonic is not new for maybe some of you. It's presented in this workshop last year, but I will just present some uh, updates. So basically, the architecture of Sonic is it itself is a, a operating system in the switch, and uh, running in Linux system, and uh, it has all kinds of uh, control plane softwares running, and uh, finally it will use Psi to compile it to the specific uh, format of the field in the ASIC. Of course, uh, P4 ASIC is one of them, and uh, because of the Psi interfaces, we can also you know replace the real data plane with the you know, uh, behavior emulator like BM2. And uh, the, the update is that now we can claim that uh, Sonic is a, is a production quality because it's already used, largely deployed in the Azure data center and it has a lot of control plane features available. And it's also that you know, we work with uh, Barefoot and uh, we, w we work on the how to translate control plane to the Psi and barefoot work on how to translate Psi to the P4 program. And uh, this pipeline has already been fully tested and uh, we have more confidence on that. And uh, what's more is that uh, Sonic and P4 together is packed in a Docker container. It was, it's very lightweight. And uh, with a small VM in Azure, you can run many, many of these things. Okay, with this stack, I, you, you can open your mind to do all kinds of innovation. For example, in the data plane, you can test your program with the context. You can test how co it coexists with existing features. You can invent a new side API. You can invent a new control plane protocols for people or even modify the existing protocol because everything is open sourced. Okay, now it seems that we already answered the first question. And then to answer the second two question, we need a jump, right? So currently we tell you that maybe Sonic and P4, you have a very full identity, full stack control plane and, uh, and the data plane. And but to really evaluate the features in the wild, you need a whole uh, environment of the network. And then the network will be a larger scale. We have a lot of devices from different vendors. They're very heterogeneous. And uh, maybe you have three options to you know, achieve this uh, environment. First, do it in your production, which is not acceptable. Second, just make a copy of your production, which means double your infrastructure cost, which is also not acceptable. So that we choose the third one, right? The third one is that we want to do our best to achieve the real control plane which means a real device uh, firmware, real topology, real configuration, and then we somehow virtualize the most of the data plane, which means for ASIC we use behavior models, and for interface and links we use model, uh, virtual interfaces and links. So then we use a crystal net, which is a cloud scale network emulator to achieve this. So this is the architecture of uh, CrystalNet. The center of this is uh, orchestrator on the, on the left downside. And it takes the information from production and uh, 
start a bunch of VMs, maybe tens of hundreds of VMs inside the cloud. And on each of the VM, it will install the uh, sandboxes of the devices. And it will interconnect the sandboxes just exactly the same way as the production. So it will form uh, just a software version of your production network. And uh, what's more is that it also has a management overlay network. And you can, pl and uh, a jump box, you can plug in all the, you know, uh, the measurement tools that are used in real life and apply it to the emulated network without any motivation. Sorry, modification. Um, and uh, I just highlight several features of CrystalNet. The first is on-demand scalability. It can emulate a really, really large network. And uh, the first requirement is it must run on multiple uh, multiple, uh, multiple VMs because one single VM cannot hold the whole network. And the second is that um, it must be just horizontally scale out very easily. With more resource, it just naturally can emulate a larger network. The third is that because the, the, you have a large distributed system, so failure is normal. So you, it can, it must be, you know, uh, be changed, updated, and recovered incrementally. So to achieve this, the key idea is that we decouple the design part of the network and the deployment part of the network. We offer a high-level language uh, APIs for you to design what your network will look like, and then we use a runtime compiler to you know, deploy it into your, given your cluster. And we also make the state of each virtual machines independent, so that when one virtual machine dies, we can just easily recover from the other. And the second problem we're facing is that because we have both uh, P4 devices and the legacy devices, and uh, the legacy devices are from different vendors, they offer different kind of virtualization uh, techniques to us. So we have a very heterogeneous environment. And maybe in this environment, maybe what you think is that, you know, what we are doing is, you know, for each of the uh, sandboxes, we, we create the virtual links and the virtual interface and interconnect them together. But actually, this simple solution does not work because of three problems. The first is the chicken egg problem. Because uh, compared with the real network, we are, because we're virtual, so we need to first bring out the sandboxes and add the virtual links. But some kind of vendors just define that before the software starts, it has to see all the interfaces. So it's a chicken and egg problem. And also there are some vendors that are close sandbox. So you, it's not easy for you to insert any software or do anything that change the network setup. So to solve this, our design is to, to, to create a two layer and we use a homogeneous container to create the network topology and then create the virtual link and the virtual interfaces to interconnect them. And after this is done, we run the actual device software on top of that. And also, you know, each of the free container is sharing network namespace with the app layer. So let the app layer, when they start, it will see all the interfaces. And the network already start up, already started. And uh, this also, you know, enable us to manage the network homogeneously because all the networking stuff namespace are within the homogeneous container with we have how free then to install the measurement tools. So this is concretely how it works. We can support, so the, 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 the device sandbox can be either container, VM, or even hardware. So here's the details. For container, it's easy. Well, after the finite, we run the device OS container on top of that and share the namespace. And if it's a VM, we first run a wrapper container on top of the uh, Finet container, and then run the hypervisor in this container. And then in this hypervisor, we run the VM. And what is more interesting is for the uh, hardware device. And if we want to plug in the hardware device inside the virtual network, what we do is we first use a find out switch, and uh, we will distinguish which, which interface it's from which interface is packed from, and we'll tag it to different VLAN. And then we we'll have a dispatcher container running on top of the Finet container. And then from the VLAN tag, we will know how to forward this packet to the which virtual link and to the uh, emulated network. 
So that's how we just support a very heterogeneous environment, no matter what you give me is container, VM, or, or hardware. So let's talk a little bit about the cost. Okay, maybe you would think that, okay, if I emulate the whole data center, it will cost me a lot, but actually it's not. So it's, it's given that, you know, the, the container is lightweight and the, the price of the cloud is so damn cheap. So uh, uh, even we emulate the largest network, it only takes 100 hours. Uh, dollars per hour. And uh, what's even better is that if you only want to emulate a part of the network, ChrisNet will carefully design a, a, a boundary of the you know, emulation zone and uh, mock up all the boundary, boundary conditions so that it's guaranteed that the result will be the same, identical as in the real network, and also significantly cut the cost. Okay, I quickly go over the experience. And uh, we use this type of pipeline to plug in the Sonic hardware and test it with a larger scale emulated uh, production environment. And that's why we claim that you know, we can use this into the production environment. We also use this to uh, test the, the Psi plus P4 pipeline so that we start two uh, emulations and for one of them I would replace the one layer with the P4 switches and then we do the comparison and the verification. This is how we accelerated the, our speed to find the bugs inside Psi and P4. And here's the conclusion. So to answer the original question how P4 features work in the wild, so I introduced two pieces of the software. Sonic which offer you a high fidelity uh, control plane software stack and ChrisNet, which, which uh, interconnect all the software stack with a high fidelity network emulation. So overall, this is only a one step that for the ideal network development pipeline we are building. So because currently a, 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 a serious problem is that a vendor is developing and testing in their environment, and uh, we don't have the too much confidence to you know, directly use it in our production environment. So there should be a bridge that allow the vendors, researchers, and the creators to directly test their features in the customer's environment. So I will end up this talk and happy to take any question. Thank you. So I think, I think this is really great work, um, and I, you know, I have lots of questions I'll probably ask you offline, but I just had one question that you didn't describe in your, in your talk is, uh, could you just explain how the end hosts are connected to, the, to your network? Uh, the question is how does end hosts are connect to the network? So in the emulation, you can plug in end host. For example, uh, you can start a Ubuntu uh, containers and uh, enter the Tor so that so the end host will be there. So, like one limitation of Minnet, for example, is that since I run on, uh, you know, Ubuntu Linux, it's it's hard to get Windows end hosts, for example, and you need to run them. You need to run them uh, usually as a VM in KVM. Or uh, and my th question for you is, if, is uh, you know, do you have a way of handling Windows hosts? And if you figured out, you know, considered using like a scale out thing where you use like Windows containers uh, in a window on a Windows kernel to emulate a lot of Windows hosts on a single VM. Yeah, the question is whether the host that can support. Uh, OS like Windows. So the answer is uh, it's possible, but we haven't tried out. But uh, uh, if if the host uh, you can you can bring up a Windows VM and uh, you still use Docker to bring up the Windows um, container. And if the Windows can then allow us to manipulate the virtual interfaces, and that's possible. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.